All right, so now that we have created our Google OAuth 2 application successfully in the previous video, and if you haven't seen that video, definitely go ahead and check it out. But if you already have your OAuth 2 application created already, and you just want to know how you can set up a web server in Node.js, specifically with Express Framework, and how you can actually uh, use that to create a Google OAuth 2 server, so your customers can actually authenticate using Google, then you've come to the right place. I know that was a whole lot of stuff, but too long didn't read. Basically, I'm going to be teaching you how you can set up an OAuth 2 server that allows you to have your customers authenticate using their Google account. Okay, that's pretty much what we're doing. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll set up a project repository. Uh, and all of the code will be on a GitHub a repository, so don't worry. But I'll go ahead and call this Google OAuth 2 tutorial. Uh, actually, let me do OAuth 2, Node.js tutorial. And I'll CD into this repository or this local repository. And I go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code right away. But it's empty, but that's okay. We'll set up our project right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and first initialize my project using the npm init-y script. It's also give me a manifest file, also known as the package.json file. And now we can go ahead and install dependencies. So uh, I'm going to be using TypeScript for this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first install uh, TypeScript. I'm going to install TS Node, and I'm going to install NodeMon locally as a dev dependency. And uh, NodeMon is going to allow us to run our application, uh, every single, rerun it every single time we make changes. And the reason why we install TS Node is so that it can interpret it. Um, you might have some issues if you don't have TS Node. I know in I know I know in newer versions of Node One it actually just works without TS Node, but definitely install TS Node if you do run into any issues when you try to run a TS file uh, with Node One. And of course, we're installing TypeScript as a local dependency in case uh, we uh, are trying in, in case we have an outdated version on our global installation of TypeScript. It's always good to install, you know, the local version of it. Okay. So if we look in our node modules, we have a lot of things that are installed. Okay, but let's not worry too much about that. Now, since we installed uh, TypeScript locally, what I can do is I can actually use the npx command to execute uh, the local binary. So for example, if I do npx tsc hyphen v, it should give me 4.7.4, which is in fact the latest version. But if I were to do TSC V, because I do have TypeScript installed glo install globally on my system, you'll see that I have an older version. Okay, there shouldn't be too much dramatic changes between these versions, but it's okay. We'll use the latest version. So what I'll do now is I'll do npx TSC hyphen hyphen init, or I think it's TSC config actually. I want to create a TS config. Actually, I'm sorry, it's init, not config. I want to create the TS config file which is very important to me. And it just created it right now. Great, so that will allow us to have proper uh, TypeScript files being compiled. And we can always configure it to our need, but we should be, it should be able to work right off the bat. The next thing that I'll do is I'll install, uh, actually, before I install anything else, let me go ahead and create a source file or source folder, and I'll create the index.ts file. And this is where our source code will live. I'll go ahead and set up a dev script. So I'll create a start colon dev script. And this will basically just run NodeMon and it will pass in the uh, index.ts file. So the path to the index.ts file that lives in the source folder. So NodeMon uh, dot slash source slash index.ts. Okay. So what I can do is I can actually just run this start dev script and it'll execute this index.ts file. And because we're using NodeMon, Every single time we save or make a change to the code, it'll automatically restart it so we don't have to manually do it ourselves. Uh, so now let's go ahead and install Express. We'll install Express for now and then we'll install other packages as we as we progress through the tutorial. But I'm also going to install uh, types slash Express because I'll need that. And that's just for TypeScript. But even if you're not using TypeScript, if we're using JavaScript, you should be able to follow along because a lot of stuff that we'll be doing isn't really going to be that much different. The major differences will probably be things like using type annotation to infer the type of the parameter. 
And you don't really need to do that in JavaScript. Well, you can't do that in JavaScript because that's a TypeScript feature. All right, so now let's go ahead and import uh, Express from Express. And we'll go ahead and create an Express app by calling this Express function. And we'll also set up an environment variables file and we will need to install the .env package so that we can load local environment variables. So let's do npm i hyphen d.env because we're installing this as a dev dependency. All right, cool. Now that we've installed it, let's go ahead and set up the environment variable for port. We'll do port 3001. We'll set up environment variables right now uh, for the Google ID. It's Google ID. Uh, let me actually call this a OAuth. You know, I'll just call this Google ID. I'll get the uh, I'll get the uh, the values later. For now, we'll just leave it empty. Okay, I'll grab them when we actually need to reference them. So don't worry about it for now. But if you want to, you can go ahead and place them right over here. If you already know what the values are, that is okay. But they should be pretty self-explanatory. But don't worry about it for now. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, up top over here. We'll go ahead and import the config function from the dot env package and it will just invoke it immediately so that way uh, all the local environment variables are loaded into memory and we can actually reference them i'll go ahead and create an asynchronous bootstrap function is what i like to call this and what a lot of people like to call this and basically this is going to be a function that's just going to be executed when the code is ran and the reason why uh, this is good is because we can actually just use await inside this async function. I think in uh, later versions, I'm not, I don't remember exactly because I haven't coded for a while, but I, I do think that in later versions of TypeScript, they do support, or not TypeScript, but ES, uh, they support top level await, um, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and wrap everything in a try catch statement. Well, not everything, but at least the important functions that we'll be calling. And that one will be the app.listen function. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pass in the port, which we're going to get from the environment variable. And we'll pass in a callback function that will log a simple message that tells us that the server is now up and running and accepting requests. So first, I'll get the port. So let's go ahead and grab that port from the process.env.port property. So remember, if you don't know how .env works, basically what happens, or if you don't know how environment variables work in general, you can reference any environment variable that's stored on your operating system through Node.js by referencing process.env, okay? Now, loading environment variables using the .env module is very similar. The only difference is that it loads it temporarily, and once the application exits, uh, it doesn't do anything else. It doesn't modify It doesn't modify your actual operating system variables. Okay, and it will never override your operating system environment variables. So if you have the same name, uh, if you have the same name of an environment variable stored in your .env file as your OS, as your operating system environment variable, it will actually use the operating system's environment variable name, the value of that, instead of the one stored in your env file. So let's say, for example, on my operating system, I have an environment variable named Google ID. It would use the value of that instead of the value of this. So that's why it's important to make sure that you don't have any conflicting names, any similar names, okay? Uh, but anyways, so process.env.port, we'll go ahead and get the value of port from our env file, okay? And what I'll do is actually, let me move this uh, const app declaration inside the bootstrap function. And I'll go ahead and pass in the value of port or the port variable inside here as the first parameter inside the listen function. And the second argument will be a callback function. And I'll just simply uh, log running on port, port. Perfect. And now if I go ahead and look at the console, you'll see that, well, first we need to run the app first. Let's do npm run start dev, because that's the name of our script. And this will basically just execute nodemon. And you can see that it's running on port 3001. So our server is up and running. If we were to go to the address bar and we looked at the local host port 3001 and we just went to this uh we went to this uh website right local host port 3001 you'll see that it's up and running cannot get because obviously we don't have any routes that are returning any responses right now and that's fine okay of course i can go ahead and set one up right now 
if I wanted to. But that's what we'll do right now. So uh, the next thing that we'll do, of course, is we'll, we will need to set up uh, the auth routes for the Google authentication. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and organize things a little bit because I don't want to be very messy with our application. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and create a new folder called routes. And I'll go ahead and create a uh, an auth.ts file. And we're going to go ahead and use an express router to, um, whoops, to organize our routes. So to do this, we'll go ahead and import router from the express package. And we create a router the same way that we create an express app by invoking the router function. Okay, the difference is that we're invoking the router function instead of the express function. But uh, what it returns is very similar to what the express function returns, okay? We can go ahead and reference methods like router.get, router.put, router.post, right? very similar, okay? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and export this router as a default export. And we'll go ahead and import auth routes. We'll import the auth file from slash routes slash auth and we'll name this import as auth routes okay and then what we'll have to do is we'll have to go ahead and right above before we call app.listen we'll need to call and i'll actually do this before the try catch block because this usually does not throw an error or actually i don't think i don't think it will and we'll go ahead and call app.use and we'll go ahead and register a path name for auth routes so what i'll do is I'll do slash API uh, slash auth and we'll pass it auth routes. And what will happen is every single route that we register for our auth router inside auth.ts will be prefixed with slash API slash auth. So that way we don't have to actually do that for every single route. So every single route will automatically be prefixed by it. So for example, if I were to go ahead and set up a get request uh, for let's just say Google, and let's just do a simple uh, response that send 200. Send back a 200 response, right? Let's go ahead and go to our app. It should all it should auto restart. Let's go to slash API slash auth slash Google. It's going to give us an OK. And if I were to set up a second route, let's do slash uh, Google OAuth two. Let's save. Let's do slash OAuth two. It also give me an okay, right? So I don't need to manually prefix every single route with slash API slash auth, right? I basically create a router. I export that router. I import it inside index.ts, the main file. And then what I do here on line 10 is I call app.use. And what this part does is it basically prefix the entire, it prefix all the routes that are registered inside this auth router with slash API slash auth. And you can do this with any router that you create. If I were to create a user's router to handle the user endpoint, and then I import that router inside index.ts, I could then go ahead and register slash API slash users with the user route, if we had that, that is. Okay, that's a nice trick that I want to explain for all those who use Express. If you didn't know that, just just, just in case you didn't know that. Okay, so it's actually good that we set up the, uh, the Google route. But let me actually change this from OAuth2 to redirect because that's just what we'll just reuse these routes. Okay. So let me explain what's going to happen next. So what, we already set up our routes now so we can visit them just fine. The next thing that we need to do is obviously uh, auth. we need to authorize the user. But how do we do that, right? Well, the first thing that we'll need to do is, of course, set up Passport. Now, what I'll do in the next episode is I'll show you how we can install Passport and set it up with our project. I don't want to make this such a long tutorial, so I'll break it up into little pieces. So in the next episode, I'll install Passport. I'll show you how we can uh, configure our application to work with Passport, and then you'll see how it'll redirect us to the Google, the Google login screen, okay? So I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.